It's game two of this rivalry series between the Purdue Boilermakers and the Illinois Fighting Illini. Both teams looking to build from strong performances last night to close the calendar year victorious. Good evening everyone from the Ice Arena in Champaign, Illinois on the Illini Hockey Network and on WPGU 107.1. On the call, I'm George Corey. Last night, game one was an absolute classic. Fast play and plenty of shots, while also plenty of defense and stalwart goaltending. It was everything you wanted in a hockey game. Despite being relatively outplayed for a good chunk of regulation, it was Purdue that held on to emerge victorious in the overtime period. Kane Pasquet led the way with 29 saves, all of them hard earned on shots Illinois had elevated or on chances right in front. It's rare to leave a game having to give it your all on almost every save, but that's exactly what happened for the Purdue netminder last night. He is in goal again tonight. And another factor too, it took 64 minutes for the top line of Groen, Theodore, and Toriani to get active. It wasn't until Toriani's game-winning goal in overtime that they were really a factor. So what's Dave Apple doing tonight? He's splitting up that top line. Toriani joins another line to contend alongside the more productive Peyton Smith and Evan Spadafora. More on that in a moment and the personnel changes made from both teams. Illinois will have to contend with those two factors, but they also made some great strides in fixing some problems of their own. They were much faster on all sides, receiving passes better, they played a cleaner game and wasted no time clearing the puck. What has been their greatest weakness in that wasn't a factor last night. And all four of those strides from last night worked in tandem to produce one of their best games of the season. Simply put, there wasn't much that they could have done different. That being said, there are some personal adjustments and line changes for Illinois to start this game. We'll talk about the impact those will have as they look to string together another good performance. But for now, we send it down to public address announcer Nick Miner for starting lineups and the national anthem. Thank you. 
Starting lineups again brought to you by Skender, the general contractors behind the premier construction experience. Visit Skender.com to learn more. Again, Spatafora and Smith joined Toriani, last night's three most productive skaters for the Boilermakers. And not only were those three the most productive men on the ice outside of Kane Pasquet for Purdue, they are also all three playing their last game for the program, all graduating as the semester comes to a close. Purdue's leading scorer, Toriani, among that group, along with Peyton Smith, who played such a huge role defensively. Evan Spatafora involved on both sides of the ice as well last night. Meanwhile, on the other side, a big change for Illinois. The Ettingen line split up. And a last minute change from John Opilka. It's Peter Campisi in place of David Ettingen on the second line, accompanying Gregory Ettingen. We saw the chemistry between the Ettingen brothers on full display last night. It almost led to a few goals, so curious in particular to see how long that change will last as Illinois starts out with a puck. Joe Dorian moving it to the far side, taken away by the Boilers and resetting, although Matt Veith, pesky on the forecheck for Illinois. Nathan Dash takes it back. Near side now, Dorian feeds in neutral ice, taken by Sasha Matt Veev, gains the zone, feeds it right to a black sweater. Purdue sends it to the far side. Gregory Ettingen chasing that one down, cleared by the Boilers. Taken again by Ettingen, however. Illinois' turn to look for a clear. They have it. Sasha Matviev trying to hold on to it. He does. Gains the zone. Tries to go around one man, but cannot. Resorted to the outside now. Now to the near side corner. Ettingen feeds it all the way around. Luke Alpi will take it for Illinois. Tried for a centering pass. Cut off by a black sweater. There he is, the aforementioned Peyton Smith. Now taking his time clearing it. Sending it around to the near side. Point. Waiting to clear that is Spatafora before Illinois chips it back in to the boiler zone. That's Jackson Graff getting the start alongside Dan Wessel. And he had it now, send it back close to his net. Very pesky with the forecheck to start out. Illinois has, in particular, Alexander Matviev and Alec Bogdanov. Verasi takes it now off of a pass, tries to go in on the backhand, he scores! Seventy-nine seconds into the game, Illinois in front. That was beautiful. We talked about the forecheck for Illinois being an increased presence, Bogdanov and Matt Vive in particular. While there, it generated a turnover. Verasi in the right spot to receive a beautiful pass from the near side point from those boards, and then he takes it himself and delivers a beautiful backhand feed past Kane, past Gay. And really the first blemish we've seen out of past Gay in this entire series as that shot goes wide. Cole Theodore there, he gets hit along the boards. Increasingly physical play from Illinois as well. Will Toriani moves to his left and gains the zone. Two on five, nothing much he can do, he stays on the outside. It was Slovic that had the assist from the boards, sent to Varasi and he did it the rest of the way. Taken away now before it's poke checked in, still by center ice, controlled now by David Ettingen. There they are, Greg and David back on the ice together and only took them two minutes of ice time for John O'Pilka to make that change. Back the other way now go the Boilers. One guy gets sandwiched, Nick Anderson delivers a hit on Spatafora. Now David Ettingen going the other way, check that. It's Gregory who fires and a save made by Pasquet. Again, the goal from Verasi just a minute ago, really the only blemish the 6-2 netminder, the Saskatchewan native has had in this series. Last night, led the way with 29 saves. Again, all of them really hard earned. And we talked about with how big of a frame he has, Illinois would have to elevate the puck. That's exactly what they did on their lone goal last night for Matthew McDonald. And that's exactly what Verasi did just a minute ago for Illinois' first goal of this one. Purdue looks to clear, Illinois laying the boom around the boards, and they take it now, that's Joe Dorian on the near side gaining the zone, moving to his left, but an offside call. Again, if you're just joining us, the goal 79 seconds into the game from Anthony Verasi. Off a beautiful backhand, he took it himself once he received a pass from the point. 
and the freshman has been rising in the ranks for Illinois. Now his fifth of the season, getting more and more involved playing time in exactly the role you could say Gregory Ettingen was in last year for Illinois. That's exactly what Anthony Verassi has been, taking the title, the mantle of the upstart freshman to start the season. That one caroms around to the far side, cleared by David Ettingen. Chase down for it now. Cam Page has it. Gives one man a snow shower, looks to clear it, sends it back to neutral ice before getting hit. Matt Veeve with it now. He gains the zone. Tries to go around one man, but resorted to that outside. On his sixth there is Ryan Kovitz. Matt Veeve still able to hold on to it. Feeds it around. Harrison Slovic can't get a shot off. Beautiful poke check right there from Purdue. Slovic looks to reset. Dangerous pass around. And that will carry him all the way to the far side corner. Alpi sends it into the trapezoid. Illinois is lucky that wasn't a turnover. Gregory Ettingen back the other way. One on three. Feeds it back to Slovic who fans on that shot. Still a save made by Pasquet. In the trapezoid, a chase down for it between Bogdanoff and Jackson Graff. 50-50 puck battle there. Pulled out to Anthony Verassi. Illinois able to get it close. A shot in and a save made off the pad of Pasquet. Back to the near side towards the half wall. Etten getting back to the near side corner. Now into the trapezoid, a chase down for it. Dan Wessel gets his stick on it first and clears it. Illinois able to take it away and neutralize, however. Harrison Slovic plays catch with Luke Alpi, has to chase it around the trapezoid. Will Toriani harassing him. Playing the ricochet game, both teams are on the near side. It goes into the Purdue zone. Illinois looking to get their mid on it, but they can't as it's cleared off the skate of Tyler Groen. Chase down for it for Nick Anderson. Feeds it all the way around to Matthew McDonald. He looks to clear. Unable to handle that pass, Bailey McCarthy. Now Purdue's turn to do the same. Right back to Nick Anderson in the Illinois doghouse as he moves to his left. Gains the zone, Purdue doing a good job thus far, forcing Illinois to the outside with one lone exception as firing right in front there was Campisi. That exception, of course, being the goal from Verassi just a few minutes ago. 50-50 puck battle, pulled out to Illinois, able to handle that one now and take it back the other way, Spatafora. Two on two, poke check away there that will delay things from Nick Anderson. Spatafora still trying to go around, Purdue still has their mitts on it, fires inside and that does not go. Backhand there from Matthew Wheeler. Illinois able to control now, Bailey McCarthy back the other way. Two on four, tries to send that one in, too much traffic in the way and play is stopped. Five minutes into the game again. The only shot, check that, the only goal that has gone through, Anthony Verassi, a minute into the game. And Illinois will have another chance now as Dylan Franks makes his way into the penalty box. An early power play here for the Illini. Bogdanoff leading the way, the top line alongside Nick Anderson and Atticus Helfer. Joe Dorian and Gregory Ettingen round out the other five. Cleared quickly by Cole Theodore. Anderson goes to chase that one down. Again, Dylan Franks into the box for Purdue. Anderson to Dorian. Looks to gain the zone and does. Now Bogdanoff feeds it to the near side. Atticus Helfer trying to get away from that. Now goes to the corner. Tried to fire a pass in. He'll get it back at the corner now and back to the point. Looking to go in there, Anderson. They're keeping Illinois to the outside. A swing to the other way now, Ettingen. Sent back to Atticus Helfer. Looks to go in, fires one off a skate and clear. Quick pass there from Nolan Woodring. Illinois looking to go right back on the attack. Alexander Matviev gains the zone. Although a one on four as his line mates went for a change. Still able to get something close there as Matt Veeve until it's taken away in the trapezoid. Now he reciprocates, gets it back. But unable to handle that one is Harrison Slovic. How many times have we seen Alexander Matt Veeve do that in this four year career for Illinois? A one on four, he's still able to navigate the puck through traffic. Now back to the other side, that's David Ettingen. Feeds it back to Slovic. Slovic in, off a of skate. Illinois able to control and fire one and just wide. Lackadaisical pass there and cleared by William Torriani. Purdue doing a good job thus far deflecting some shots in the early going for Illinois. 15 seconds left on the power play and a last gasp here on the man advantage. 
Matt V feeds that in before getting hit, before it's cleared again by Purdue. 10 seconds left on the liner. Moving quickly, Ettingen. That's David Ettingen who tries to get around one man. He does. Thought about a wraparound. Now will fire and a save made by Pasquet. Out of the box comes Dylan Franks. His slashing penalty is over. Chase down for that one. Icing waved off. Franks goes down, fresh out of the box, but still controlled by Spatafora. Fans on that shot. David Ettingen moving back the other way. Now to Sasha Matviv. Line change for Illinois. Matt Viv will chip that one in. Goes on goal before it's taken by a black sweater. Turned around in the trapezoid. Purdue looking to clear. They're a little slow to clear the puck, but now they do. Chase down for it again. Matthew Goring with it now. Fires one just wide. Caroms all the way around. And another chase for it. Alexander Matviv collides with a man on the near side. That's Jake Pickett. Campisi takes the puck away. And Illinois with a chance here. Campisi trying to move in, able to hold on to it and fires wide. Purdue looking to clear, and they do. Illinois increasingly physical. That seems to be an adjustment John Opilka has made from game one of this series to game two. Purdue won the battle of the boards and was the more physical team last night. Now Illinois applying the pressure in more ways than one. Not only hitting guys, but they're more active with the stick, more poke checks and things of that sort. So we're eight and a half into this one. Again, a goal coming a minute into this game from Anthony Verassi, the difference thus far. As Purdue able to clear it, that one ended up right in their bench. So face off now, back in the offensive zone for Illinois between Bogdanoff and Smith, won by the former, swung around to the near side. Nick Anderson kept to the outside, great defense right there by Purdue. That was Ryan Kovitz denying Anderson there. To the near side now, taken away and fired in. Again, it was the hit that gave Illinois the puck right there. They're turning to the physicality and the forecheck as well. Helfer feeds that in, back to Verassi who fires a shot and into the netting. Barassi now on multiple chances for Illinois. First the goal, a minute into the game, and secondly, just now on that shot, getting into the right places. He'll creep up towards the middle of the ice when someone's struggling for the puck along the boards. And great communication between Atticus Helfer and Harrison Slovic those two times. Slovic again credited with the assist to know Barassi was there and to feed it to him. Nick Anderson, near side. Chipped in by Gregory Ettingen, right to Dan Wessel. Cleared by the Boilers, fed in on the other side. Fort's taken now with a burst of speed by Alexander Matviv. Tries to go around two men, he cannot. Now going around a man is Smith, who fires at a save made by Nolan Woodring. One of his first tests of the night, and he answers the call. Again for Illinois last night, Ben Mazurik played very well, but John Opelka making the change, going to Woodring, Historically, the team has rallied around him, particularly in the beginning of the season. After a loss, after a tough game in particular, they've turned to him, but he is now starting his seventh game in the last nine. As on the near side now, that's Bailey McCarthy. Feeds it into a man, Purdue's turn to poke check it away. But taking it now, Harrison Slovic gaining the zone. Purdue's outnumbering Illinois when they go in. On the other side now, Luke Alpe able to navigate it through one man, fire a backhand in, still alive in front, off the glove. And back to the point, Alpe again fires off the pad, a save made from Pasquet. Campisi chases that one down, McCarthy comes to his aid, fight for it, still being fought for. And cleared by Purdue, they have numbers now, a two on two. On the far side, weaving back and forth and firing, and a save made there, that one off the stick of Matthew Wheeler. Exactly halfway through this first period, the lone goal coming from the freshman, Anthony Verassi for Illinois. Now Purdue with a chance to get some pressure in on their side of the ice. 
in that near side corner, taking to Joe Dorian now. He looks to clear in the trapezoid, moves with a burst of speed, and able to clear now. Bogdanoff, two on two, moves to his left, still going around, looking for the backhand, fires, they score! Bogdanoff's backhand forced Kane Pasquet so far to his right. And a fortunate carom, Atticus Helfer, in the right place at the right time. It's 2-0 Illinois. We talked about the, the stalwart game, one of his best games he's ever had last night in Kane Pasquet, but so far today has been one to forget. That has become a weakness of his, the backhand, as Bogdanoff goes around again. Tried to find a man there for Rossi, nothing much he could do. He has it now in the corner, looking for an outlet. He's harassed, a two-on-one. Purdue's forced a lot of those two-on-ones early in this game. Helfer able to get it out. Now to Nathan Dash, back to Helfer. The two of them play catch. Dash looking to fire, great defense here from Purdue. Now he does fire, and that's why. Cleared by Purdue, Spatafora moves in, tries to go around three men, gets some aid there from Franks, but all the way to the far side corner where it's taken away now from Bogdanoff, two on two to the far side now. Varasi tries to go around one man, and he is hit. Great defense here by Purdue as Illinois is going in. They are shutting down a strength of this Illini team, transition hockey. Wheeler back the other way, a one on four, taken away now, nice play there before it's fired in, and it does not go. Gregory Ettingen feeds it across now to his brother David. A lot of traffic in front, and that stopped that shot. Now on the near side, taking that one, it's Wheeler, and he feeds it all the way in. Dangerous play there as Woodring got out of the crease, but bailed out. Illinois moving back the other way. David Ettingen tried to go in, too much traffic. Into that near side corner it goes. Pulled out, Matt Viva shot. Great deflection there, but the puck right back to Illinois at the point. Playing the ricochet game there is Slovic. Matt Viva harassed. 50-50 puck battle pulled out to Gregory Ettingen. He has to get it away now as he's harassed on the boards. Still trying to go in there. David Ettingen falls down and play stopped. That might be two minutes for Purdue. So two trends that are not repeating themselves tonight. Last night, a great game by Kane Pasquet, but Illinois has sent two backhanders this, his way on his right side that have really hurt him. One that went through and the other, he over-pursued so much on the backhand that the ricochet gave Atticus Helfer a wide open net. The second factor that hasn't crossed over to tonight is the defense hasn't given him any help. Now the second power play of the period for Illinois as into the box there is Jake Pickett. David Ettingen has it. Now to Harrison Slovic. Slovic looking to go in, shoots one, save made. Karams to the near side. Around the half wall there. Still being fought for. Pulled out by Illinois. Slovic across. David Ettingen back to Harrison Slovic. Over to Matt Viva on the near side. He goes in and fires. A lot of traffic in front. Purdue doing a great job with the blocking here. Another shot there, still goes through, still alive in front, and another goes! And Illinois has responded with authority. That's Luke Alpi on the power play goal. It's something that Purdue did very well last night is the defense was very staunch in front to deny rebound chances. They haven't been able to do that tonight. The second out of three goals that Illinois has scored on the rebound. This is a team in the Boilers that loves to crowd the crease, stick three guys defensively around the crease and make you earn it from the outside and it has been anything but for Purdue tonight. Pasquet still in goal. Let's see if the defense can give him some help here, but he's gonna need more than that as his team is now down three to nothing, just 14 minutes into this hockey game. Again, the goal coming from the defenseman, Luke Alpi, on the power play for the orange and blue. 
Slovic gets it. Turn around now and clear. And ice as well. Face off into the corner, and now to the trapezoid. Purdue looks to clear. There is the saucer pass, but it's cut off there by Matthew McDonald. Illinois moving with a burst of speed as Campisi shot is high. Tried to go right back in there. Nothing much he could do. Two on one, now it's Illinois' turn to crowd. Still being fought for, now pulled out by the Boilers. Nick Anderson runs after that one, and a face off back in the offensive zone for Illinois. Again, 14 minutes into this game, three goals already. And a night Kane Pasquet is gonna wanna forget. His defense has done a great job cutting off rebounds, cutting off chances in front. But tonight it has been very different. All three of Illinois' goals coming on the doorstep. Andrew McLean set to take the face off for Illinois on the near side. Still being fought for in the circle. A few men converge on it. A few bodies cancel each other out before it's cleared by Purdue. Moving quickly, Tyler Groen, first time we've called his name tonight. Feeds a backhander in, save made. Still alive in front, looking for a backhand from Theodore. Unable to do anything there as the Purdue player fed it back to the slot. He had a chance right in front. That was Tyler Groen. He couldn't get it moving the right way. Now Jake Pickett. And play stopped. Looks like we'll have a power play here for Purdue. Into the box, Caleb Santiago. And Purdue has a chance to get one back here and get their first power play. They say time is a healer, but what time can also do is solidify. So Purdue already down three goals. You could very easily make the case that this power play is do or die for them, just in a mental capacity alone. Peyton Smith sets to take the face off, opposing him, Alexander Matviev. Big win there from Matviev as it's taken out of the corner. Illinois looks to clear. Purdue crowding the puck. The Illini do clear, and Purdue will reset. First power play of the evening for Purdue. Jake Pickett moves it around, feeds it to nobody. Gregory Ettingen now looks to control it. A fight for it in the neutral zone, and taken now. Fed on across, a nice pass, unable to handle that one though, Franks. That's Cole Theodore looking to move in from the point, fires one, deflected wide. Backhand chance ends up on goal and frozen. Beautiful backhand right there from Peyton Smith. Again, we talked about it, he was the MVP last night with the exception of Pasquet. He was the top skater on the ice for Purdue, involved heavily on the defensive end. But tonight, not only has Illinois silenced that top line thus far for Purdue, they've also silenced Smith in particular and have made Pasquet want to forget these last 15 minutes. Face off again, won by Illinois, looking to clear it. And they do, a one-on-one -on -one chance here from Bogdanov. Moves to his left, being a little bit deliberate there, trying to go for the backhand now, and all he'll do is kill time. Feeds it into the Purdue zone. And a black sweater will take it. Purdue's turn to be patient, halfway through this power play. Now Groen feeds it in, save made. Karam's right back to another man, and another penalty coming here against Illinois. That action occurred right in front of the crease on the near side. It appeared to be Torin Frank, the victim of perhaps a cross check against Harrison Slovic. So four minutes left in the first period, 45 seconds left on the minor penalty to Caleb Santiago. So for three quarters of a minute, it'll be a five on three for Purdue. 
Again, they're down three goals. They need one back. Mental, the mental standpoint alone, you need one back right now if you're Purdue. Tyler Groen and Matt Veeve takes the face off. Illinois' top centerman wins that. And it's cleared again. 40 seconds left in the five on three. This is a must have here if you're Purdue. They wait, now Groen gains the zone. Waits at the half wall, back to Torin Frank. Frank trades places now, moving in that's Toriani, back to Frank, looking to go in. They're trying to get in closer as he fires one, he scores! You had to have it, and you did! Torin Frank scores to get the Boilers back within striking distance. will force Caleb Santiago out of the box. Purdue on a power play for a minute and 35 seconds more. Five on three becomes five on four. Beautiful work there between Torin Frank and Will Toriani to slowly creep towards the high slot. And from there, the screens did the rest of the work on Nolan Woodring. That has been the greatest weakness of the Illinois netminder thus far in the season is the screen play from opposing teams. That was another factor that gave Purdue their first goal. So now it's three to one. Purdue had to have it and they did. They look to get one back here as well. A minute 10 left on the power plays. Woodring in the crease, able to deny that with the stick, feed it back to the point. Torin Frank, the goal scorer, back with it. Back to Toriani who fires one wide. Still alive in the crease, pulled out now. Toriani takes it at the half wall. Back to Torin Frank. They feed it to the near side. That's Tyler Groen. Groen looking for a pass across both teams, denied by Helfer. Frank swings it all the way to the far side for Toriani. Looking to go in, back to Torin Frank. He fires another one off the glove. Taken by Groen in the trapezoid. Fought for between Smith and Anderson. Still being fought for now. Atticus Helfer able to feed that to the near side half wall where it's taken now by Torin Frank. Can Bogdanoff get it out? That's a 50-50 puck battle. 30 seconds left on the minor penalty now. Feeds one in that gets close. Woodring has to say no. That was very dangerous right there as it went off of an Illinois stick and close in. Two and a half left in period number one, 20 seconds left on the minor penalty. Quite an eventful first period this has been. A combined four goals on just 12 shots and quite the dichotomy that we've seen compared to last night's thriller between these two teams. Nathan Dash trying to clear that one, he will. Having to take that one now, Jake Pickett. Feeds it to the far side, last gasp on the power play here for Purdue, if they can even control the possession, and they can't. However, offside, Illinois was there. Six seconds left on the minor. Again, the goals in this first period coming from Anthony Verassi, Atticus Helfer, and Luke Alpe in that order for Illinois. They got very active right in front on Kane Pasquet and made him fall victim to the backhand chances on his right side. Saucer pass that Alexander Matveev is able to take and gain the zone. We're back to five on five as Illinois looks to get set. Matveev still has it looking for an outlet. We'll get it to the point. Nathan Dash fires a shot. He scores! Make it four for Illinois. And just when you could sense the tide was turning, just when you could sense Purdue had made the defensive adjustment, Illinois beats them from the outside this time. We talked about it, how the strength of this Purdue team is that they crowd the crease. They did it a lot last night to make you earn it from the outside. They didn't do it in the first 10 minutes of this game, and that led to three doorstep goals from Illinois. Now, they seem to have gotten back into the swing of things on the offensive side as a chase down there, and Dan Wessel sends that around. They seem to have gotten things back on the offensive side. They seem to have made that adjustment defensively. Instead, Nathan Dash turns the situation on its head. And now four to one, in favor of Illinois. Matt Veev already with his second assist of the night. Yeah. 
So with a minute 40 seconds left for Purdue, multiple questions to consider going into the first intermission. As that one goes across both seams, Dash chasing after it. He gets hit by Peyton Smith, a big hit right there. As that one rolls all the way around now. Purdue looking to clear it in the near side corner as Illinois applies a retaliatory hit. It's at the half wall now. Verasi goes down, a good hit there from Dan Wessel, but Illinois still able to control. They're looking for the centering pass. Wessel, very pesky there on Atticus Helfer to deny that. Taken now by Purdue. Saucer pass in the backhand to clear as two men are still going at it behind the Purdue net. That's Dan Wessel and slow to get up, Atticus Helfer. And with a minute 10 left in the period, Illinois might have just bailed out their rivals. The momentum had been going Purdue's way. They had a five on three and they cashed in. Then Nathan Dash turns things around on the other side. And now Purdue has a chance to bring it back to a two goal deficit. What a boost this would be. Not if you can manage, there's still plenty of work to be done, of course, if you can manage to get that second goal. But if you can manage to kill off a three goal lead twice, just get it back to striking distance 20 minutes into this game, what a huge relief that would be for Purdue going into the locker room. Peyton Smith and Matt Veeve to take the face off. Won by Matt Veeve with help there from Gregory Ettingen. Illinois able to clear. Will Toriani, again in his final game with the program, he's graduating in just a few weeks, chases that down. Tyler Groen now, pass too hot for him. Matt Veeve slips, but it's cleared by Harrison Slovic. 45 seconds left in period number one, a minute 35 left on the minor that will carry over into the second. Going around one man there is Toriani, gains the zone, but an odd angle resorted to the outside, trying to get it back to the point. He does. Frank fed it in there, Toriani couldn't handle it. Still at the point now at the half wall. Frank looking to move in. That's growing in the trapezoid. Feeds it for a shot. They score! There he is, Toriani with great movement off the puck. And just like that, Purdue crawls back into it. To think that they were down three goals two different times in this first period. To think that their netminder who had one of the best games of his life last night gave up three goals in the first 10 minutes and to still have the momentum going in to the locker room at the end of the first intermission. That is some mountain moving right there from these Boilermakers. The score now four to two with 10 seconds left in the first period and the second power play goal for Purdue as that one doesn't go from Dory and the net dislodged with two seconds left. What a first period, six goals on only 13 shots as well. Anthony Verassi, Atticus Helfer, Luke Alpi, Torin Frank, Nathan Dash, and Will Toriani. The final of that group with his 19th goal of the season as play rounds out in period number one. Two other important notes, Alexander Matveev with two assists, Illinois with one power play goal, and Purdue with two power play goals. Again, to, to think that you're, to think that you're down three goals twice in the first period and you still claw back multiple times, you still have the momentum going into the second period. Has to be an amazing sight from the Purdue perspective. And two, it's gonna make you, if you're Illinois, you're gonna wanna put this away early coming into the second period. So we won't be surprised if Illinois tries to go out on the attack to start the second period. There's of course an incentive for Purdue to as well. We have a fun one here. Six goals, 13 shots, 20 minutes, and six penalties. After all of that, four to two Illinois. Second intermission coming up after this.
Welcome back for period number two. If you got up during the first period to, I don't know, use the bathroom or grab a soda, chances are you missed some action. Consider this, last night, three goals in 64 minutes, including that overtime period which gave Purdue the win. Tonight, six goals in 20 minutes. Twice as many goals in a third of the time. And exactly the opposite of the night that Kane Pasquet had last night, three goals in his first 10 minutes. That being said, you're not out of it if you're Purdue. You're up, you put up two of your own to get within striking distance, and you managed to capitalize on the two penalties given to you by Illinois. So considering all of that, let's see if Illinois tries to shut down the Boilers again. Let's see if they come out on the attack to start the second period by getting out to another three goal lead. And also, let's see how they play the second period. Do they hit? Are they as physical as they were in the first, knowing that Purdue might be one power play away from cutting this lead in half? How does Illinois play this second period in terms of the physicality, given you don't want to run the risk of committing another penalty? It's a balancing act. So look for them to come out on the attack early and look for them to maybe be a little bit more restrained, maybe be active with the stick a little bit more, some poke checks as opposed to some hits or anything like that. Something that won't draw the right arm of the linesman. And again, for Purdue, you just have to lay patient. Time is your friend here if you're the Boilers, given that you've been able to come back from two, three goal deficits and, and, and cut them closer. Again, work still to be done in this second period, but given that for Purdue, you, you can sit back as long as you want if you're the Boilers and just wait for Illinois to make the mistake. If you're Purdue, wait for them to make the mistake, wait for the penalty to occur, and you're in business. Nolan Woodring back in goal for Illinois. Kane Pasquet, despite giving up three in the first 10 minutes, and one more to boot, still in goal for the Boilers. We had our eyes on him after that third goal thrown in by Luke Alpi to see if his night was done, but rather still in there, the decision from Dave Apple to keep him in. And again, this time, as opposed to his defense bailing him out last night, it's been the offense that has done that in this game for Purdue to again put them within striking distance. A lot of room to go, they're down two goals. Look for Illinois to come out strong on the aggressive, trying to make it a five to two score. So if Purdue can just fend off this early Illinois rush, they will certainly be in business. As the face off pulled out quickly, fed in and moving quickly, there he is, Tyler Groen. Joe Dorian trying to cut that one off. He does in the trapezoid. He looks to clear now. Instead sends it back to the point, but it's taken by Illinois. Back over to David Ettingen, a little bit too hot for him. He has to fight for that one, but he's able to keep it alive. Now in the corner, sends it back to the point. Fed back in, playing the ricochet game there. There's Gregory Ettingen. And he's trying to circle back now. He does at the half wall, now in the far side corner. Looks to get it back to the point and does. Moving to his right, Joe Dorian. Now back in that half wall and in the trapezoid, Matt V for, looked for a centering pass, couldn't feed one to an orange sweater. Illinois still able to get it back now and Anthony Verasi will reset, chip it in. Nobody there for Illinois and Pasquet directs it away. Atticus Helfer now gives a man a snow shower in an attempt to gain the puck, still being fought for, kept alive by Illinois for the time being. Taking that one now, Dan Wessel moves to his left. Purdue still has it in that corner. Illinois keeping it in the offensive zone. They're denying the Boilers the ability to clear it until now. Pasquet active with the stick again. Feeds it off to a man, that's Jackson Graff. On the near side, sent in, looking for a ricochet. Instead it goes to Harrison Slovic. Illinois looking to clear. That one goes into the Purdue bench. And so a face off in the Illini zone. Both teams have played with a increased speed here in this second period. Again, that was a topic of last night. That was a topic of the first.
And so we have seen Purdue, contrary to what we thought, they were just going to sort of linger around, wait around, wait for Illinois to make the first mistake. No, they've been very quick with the puck as well to try and force the issue themselves. On the far side between Matthew McDonald and Evan Spadafora, McDonald has it now, Spadafora gets chunked. Able to keep it in, however, Spadafora fires a shot, save made by Woodring. Illinois looking to clear as a man gets thrown into the boards viciously. That was Bailey McCarthy, but he's still able to send it across. Chase down for it, and an icing there. Purdue was the first to get it, nonetheless. Two minutes having gone by here in this second period. Again, the Boilers down two, but the momentum in their favor. There's a face-off now to the right of Nolan Woodring. Dylan Frank set to take it. Quick shot there off the face-off, goes off the shoulder of Matthew Goring. Cleared by Illinois, beautiful feed from Alpi to McDonald. McDonald tries to go around one man, sends it in. Glove save there from Pasquet. Some two-man game there from Luke Alpi and Matthew McDonald that will give Illinois the face-off now in their own O-zone. Matt Vive and Peyton Smith. Matt Vive has been stalwart on the face-offs tonight, but it's won by his counterpart there and taken by the Boilers on the near side. Saucer pass sent along, too hot to handle there for Steven Lucas. Nick Anderson has to send it around, instead feeds it right to a black sweater. Peyton Smith in the middle of that but play stopped as that one went into the seats. And Smith and Matt Vive will go back at it again, this time in the Illinois zone. Fought four, pulled out, quick shot there, save made off the pad, rebound in front, goes wide. Beautiful save right there from Woodring. Illinois still looking to clear it as a few men cancel each other out, and now they do. They take the scenic route, but Purdue feeds it back in, chasing that one down is Justin Yang. He has the puck now for Illinois. He gets hit along the boards. Illinois still looking to clear it now. That's David Ettingen, who does? Gregory Ettingen has it now on the other side. Tried for a shot. Anderson able to keep it alive and fire right into the bread basket. So this game now starting to resemble last night's game in the sense that both teams getting some good shots in on the opposing netminder, making quick work of the neutral zone. The speed starting to become more of a factor for both. So it seems like a return back to the low scoring affair that was last night and how that was played stylistically as Atticus Helfer tried to feed it in off a skate. Now a Purdue man fans on it and that gives Illinois the puck. Bogdanoff chases after it, ricochet, Illinois will reset. Joe Dorian moves in, chipped in there by Anthony Verassi. Dan Wessel now, backhand. Purdue slowly making their way around and they're able to clear. Torriani chips it in, two on three, still trying to keep it in, but they cannot as Illinois controls. Now Illinois' turn to slow it down. As a man harassed from the rear, Tyler Groen nearly got the best of Atticus Helfer there. But that will give Purdue the puck. Dan Wessel with his stick on it. Torriani now growing, but kept to the outside, unable to do anything on a backhand there. Nice defense from Nathan Dash to clear the puck. And here comes Illinois. Campisi able to keep that alive, go through one man, has chances in front, fires, still alive in front, and play stopped. Able to bottle that one up was Pasquet. Matthew McDonald had a chance for a wide open rebound with Pasquet down on his backside. That is not the position you want to be in if you're a goalie. And Pasquet's lucky he was able to get his glove on that. Campisi, unable to make anything happen there as that scrum goes to Spadafora, feeds it to Wheeler, too hot for him to handle now. Illinois still fighting for it on the near side. Matthew McDonald, very active with the stick. He's been very well on this shift. Trying to keep it alive there, McCarthy could not. Centering pass does not go. I'll be able to keep it in. Illinois making quick work. Back to the trapezoid now as McCarthy tries to go in. That one poke checked away. 
by Torin Frank. A man gets hit into the boards. Frank still able to hold on to it now for Purdue. Looking to clear. Illinois able to keep it in for the time being before it's taken by the Boilers, but back the other way. Unable to handle that one, Campisi. Beautiful play there, increased physical play there from Matthew Goring. In neutral ice, unable to make anything happen there. A nice hit right there from Torin Frank. Purdue returning to their physical roots, which they showed on display last night. Illinois trying to apply some physicality of their own in the form of a forecheck. Sent back to the point and cleared, but too hot to handle there. And Illinois will control things. It's Alpi looking to clear, goes off of a skate, and now into neutral ice. Still being fought for, taken now by Purdue. Oh, two on two. Smith tries to go around one man, still has it, but an odd angle, he's kept to the trapezoid. Trying to keep it alive there, taken away quite nicely. Now that's Gregory Ettingen, kept to the outside, tries to feed it around one man, cannot. Matthew McDonald comes to his aid. Illinois will reset, slow things down. Far side, Matt Veeve. Gains the zone, a one on four. We've seen him navigate through those before, but not that time as Purdue takes it and Matt Veeve gets hit. Now Illinois throws a man into the boards. Beautiful hit right there from David Ettingen. Purdue still able to hold on to it now. Six minutes having gone by here in a scoreless second period. The Illini still up by two. Is this game starting to look like how it was last night? A lot of hits and a lot of physicality and a lot of speed. Atticus Helfer moving in now off the feed from Verasi. Fans on a shot taken away by Purdue and now they have numbers. Tyler Groen fighting for it alongside Helfer. Sent now to Ryan Kovitz and the shot into the netting out of play. 13 and a half left in period number two. And the two nouns to de define this period, speed and physicality. Face off now to the left of Nolan Woodring. Pulled out by Purdue, Tyler Groen moving in quickly. Trying to get into the trapezoid. Now he gets hit along the boards. This is taken away by Illinois. Near side, the Illini clear. Joe Dorian feeds it in. Peter Campisi chases after it. Bailey McCarthy sends a man into the boards, and that might draw a penalty. Unclear though as to who it'll be called on as McCarthy ran quickly in on Jackson Graff. He took the short end of that hit as well. It will be McCarthy going into the box and a golden opportunity here for Purdue. Need I remind you, they're two for two on the power play and they're gonna look to cut this lead in half. John O'Pilko wants to talk things over with the linesman, also gives his team a free timeout to discuss how they're gonna go through this penalty kill. Again, Purdue perfect on the power play so far. It's given them their two goals thus far. Onto the ice for the Boilers, Torin Frank, Peyton Smith, alongside Toriani, Spatafora, and Groen. A combination of those top two lines for the Boilers, and you could very well make the case the five skaters that have been the most impactful in this entire series are on the ice for Purdue right now. Smith and Matt V. Face off one by Smith and a big one right there. Torin Frank at the point. Moving in now feeds it back to the half wall. Right there is Groen. They're in the 1-3-1, the Boilers are, with a lot of switching and moving around as Frank fires a shot. Still alive in front, unable to handle that one, Groen. Back to Torin Frank, looking to go in, now sends it to the far side. Toriani fires, deflected wide. Spatafora chasing it down, Joe Dorian on his six. Dorian will move away. Spatafora playing catch with Toriani, now he goes in. Frank moves closer, they try to feed it to him. Unable to take away that one though. Matt Vive now has it as Torin Frank doesn't have a stick. Hand pass there, and that will finally stop play. Alexander Matt Vive cut that pass off. And in the process of getting collided with Torin Frank, lost his stick and a hand pass will bring this one back into neutral ice. And then at 20 left on the power play for Purdue. This will be a big face off right here to define who can kill some more time. Torin Frank has it. Purdue looks to get 
right back on the aggressor. Poke check there from Dash. One on two now. Purdue waiting patiently. Instead, it's sent back around. Good defense right there by Sasha Matviv. Toriani, Groen, and Frank in the Purdue defensive zone right now. Gregory Ettingen trying to harass one of them with the four check. Chip and chase right there. Two men converge on it. That's Dorian and Groen. Illinois looks to clear, and they do. So Purdue won the faceoff, but quick advantage here for Illinois in the last 30, 40 seconds. Both teams get a line change. Purdue to look will look to reassert their dominance on the power play now. Toriani moves in in a similar shape, in a similar fashion to how we saw him win the overtime game last night. Now Wheeler, now to the far side. They get it back to Wheeler, one timer too high off the glass. Fanning on that one there is Luke Alpe. That gives the possession to Purdue, back to the point. Wheeler waiting, now moving in, again too high. Chase down for it, in the middle of that is Goring. Back to Wheeler. Purdue doing a good job keeping it in as Toriani fires off of an orange sweater. Five seconds left. They managed to get it back close, but right back to Illinois. Purdue still keeping it in, however, as moving in with a burst of speed. Shot too high. Back into the trapezoid, controlled by Illinois. Can they clear it? No, it's back to Purdue. Five on five, but the Boilers still control. And now Illinois able to clear. 11 minutes left in period number two. Unable to handle that pass is a black sweater. And now Joe Dorian will hold. He turns it over, however, to Franks. Franks makes one man miss, sends it to his right. Odd angle, will feed it in instead, and it caroms back to the point. That's Matt Wheeler with it now. He gets it, he sends it to his left. Purdue looking to move in now. Instead, it's Illinois that controls it, and they're able to clear it. A chase down for it between multiple men. That's Jake Pickett now. Luke Alpe and Bailey McCarthy in the fray for Illinois, along with the aforementioned Smith. Alpe trying to clear, still trying to clear. Now they do, but unable to handle that one there is Nick Anderson. Illinois had a chance there for some two-on-two -two work, transition hockey, but couldn't get it there as that one goes on goal. Nick Anderson into the trapezoid, Alpe there as well. Nick Anderson skirmishes with one man. Game getting increasingly physical here in this second period as it caroms back to the Purdue side. Trying to go through there as Anderson goes down with Peyton Smith. Some good hits that deny that chance there for Illinois. Now back the other way. Smith gets hit, retaliatory from Matveev. Increasingly physical as we've mentioned. Another man gets hit into the boards. McDonald now, he gets hit. Still able to come out with it though, David Ettingen as that goes on goal. Play stopped, they're still going after it. That's Matthew McDonald there for Illinois, alongside Justin Yang, the man in the middle of it with McDonald, was Ryan Kovitz. Like a pot of boiling water has the game become increasingly physical especially in this second period. And a man goes into the box for Purdue. That's Jackson Graff. So now Illinois was able to kill off the power play for Purdue and stop what had been up to that point a perfect man advantage attack from the Boilers. Now Illinois with a chance to go on a power play of their own and bring it back to a three goal lead. The top line in, led by Bogdanov and Ettingen. Another man in that line, Atticus Helfer, has it at the point. Ettingen harassed around the boards. Another man goes after it. Big hit there from Joe Dorian on William Maggart. And that might draw a penalty as well. Dorian into the box for the hit on William Maggart. That was a beautiful hit there from Dorian on the side, though. Had him. Jumped up in the air and able to apply that hit. However, it does become a four on four, which turned things back into Purdue's strength. And we talked about it. Would Illinois 
play with less of a physical tone because of the penalties, but they have returned to, you could say, their roots, certainly how they started the season, being a more physical team. The hits continue now as it's four on four for the next minute and 30. Illinois will look to kill some time and get it back to five on five. Gregory Ettingen moving in now. Moves to his left, sends it back to the point. Alpi, near side. Fires a shot in, glove save from Pasquet. And Pasquet, credit to him, he has managed to settle in since giving up that fourth goal at the 10 minute mark of the first period. Hasn't been his defense helping him as it was last night as much as it has been the offense getting Purdue back into this game. Face off to his left between Cole Theodore and Sasha Matviv. Karam's off the skate of the linesman and that will give Purdue the puck. Jake Pickett sends it back. Cam Page plays the ricochet game. Purdue able to chip it in. Now a chase down there from Theodore. Nick Anderson trying to get there first. Pulled out by Illinois. Now Jake Pickett will look to avoid one man. and He goes into the boards on his own doing, but he's still able to take it. Feeds it to Tyler Groen now. Groen trying for a backhand. Feeds it in on goal. Still alive in front. Great poke check right there to deny a point blank chance by Nathan Dash. Atticus Helfer tried to go through one man, could not. Eight minutes left here in this second period. 20 seconds left of the four on four. Near side, Atticus Helfer. Sends it across, that's Alpi, unable to handle it, and that will kill some more time. Now a chase down for it, that nearly gives Purdue the puck. Instead, it's back to Helfer. Illinois again killing some more time here as they feed it across now. Back to Alpi. He waits, he fires, and that one's wide. Back to the point now, as now it'll be 15 seconds of five on four in favor of Purdue. And they rush back the other way with a chance to get set. Seven seconds left on what is now a power play for the Boilers. And that will basically round that as Joe Dorian set to come out of the box. Seven and a half left in this second period. Torin Frank has it, feeds it across, but that one caroms right into the Purdue bench. Quite the, quite the dichotomy between these two periods. Six goals in the first, no goals in this second. An increasingly fast and physical game here in period number two. Bailey McCarthy set to take the face off alongside Jackson Graff. Check that. Alongside Dylan Franks. Franks wins it. Now to Graff. Little lackadaisical clearing the puck there and it allows Luke Alpi to get a shot off. Now Slovic with McCarthy to his right. Now McCarthy will reset. Dangerous territory here. You have a man on the forecheck. Illinois now able to feed it to the near side. Campisi goes around one man, goes around another, trying to go around the third. He cannot there, and it's taken away by Dylan Franks. Purdue moving back the other way. Again, we talked about it. Fast, speed, quick game here in this second period. That shot does not go. McDonald looks to clear it, but right to a black sweater. Can't get it around Luke Alpi there. Aiden Taylor there for Illinois. And as a stick collapses in half, Gash fires a shot in and a glove save. Face off one by Purdue, moving quickly in there. As Kovitz goes down, Purdue still able to hold on to the puck now, fed in to Steven Lucas. He's undermanned, however, as he's fighting for that one. That becomes a one on three, and Illinois wins that battle. Now they move back the other way with numbers. Dash trying to get around one man, he does, still holds on to the puck. Centers one there, unable to handle that one, Ettingen, as Matt Veeve goes right into him. And play stopped. Another penalty coming, another power play for Illinois. Six minutes left in this second period. Neither team has budged, it's still a two goal lead and a chance now for Illinois to put that back 
to three. Top line back on for the power play. They've played a lot in this second period. Leading the way, the captain Bogdanoff, Gregory Ettingen as well, alongside Joe Dorian, Helfer, and Anderson. Cam Page, the guilty party there, as he's in the box for the next two minutes. Face off one by Purdue. They look to kill some time now and clear it. That's Matt Wheeler who does just that. Had a man right in front. That was Peyton Smith who nearly made that dangerous for Purdue. Illinois looks to get set now, moving quickly on the far side. Has a couple men to his right, is Helfer. Feeds it in the corner to Dorian. Dorian harassed by Wheeler. Illinois helping out the puck handler and keeping this possession alive. Anderson in there, that's Dorian now. Dorian harassed again by Wheeler. Wheeler's been an increased presence here on this power play. Turning that one around is Bogdanoff, looking to go further in, sends it across the ice to Ettingen. Ettingen playing catch with Helfer, he looks to go in, sends it back to the point. Helfer swings it, Anderson looks to go in. One timer from Helfer, deflected right in front. Great placement from Peyton Smith. Alec Bogdanoff now chases that alongside Wheeler. A few sticks cancel each other out. It goes right to Peyton Smith and he clears. Five minutes left in the second period. Still a two goal lead. As that one poke checked away by Wheeler. He's trying to make something happen as it's kept to that corner now. Right in front, they can't get stuck to puck there. Unable to make anything happen was Toriani. He's able to take it away now. Two on three, fires one in, save made, still alive in front, still in the slot. Atticus Helper has to navigate that one through the crease and out of traffic. 30 seconds left on the power play, four and a half left in period number two, as Illinois has it on the near side at the half wall. Back to Alexander Matviv. Now to the far side, Slovic fires, a lot of traffic in front, still in front and bottled up by Pasquet. Pasquet has shown his belly a few times tonight, not the position you want to be in for a netminder. And he's been lucky that he's been able to swallow it. Been able to swallow that puck. Two stop play. 20 seconds left until Cam Page is a free man. And a face off to the netminder's right. Matt V. Van Smith, one by Matt V. Again, but unable to keep that one in, Harrison Slovic. Illinois has to reset with 15 seconds left in the man advantage. David Ettingen forced to the outside as he gains the zone, tries to take the long way around, has to circle back there as he was harassed by Jackson Graff. Out of the box comes Page. Into the trapezoid now, taken by Wessel. Has a man behind him, but he's able to clear it. Great job there to deny that from Luke Alpi. Alexander Matvey feeds that in, although a few more players cancel each other out. Jackson Graff trying to clear it. Gets some help there. Now Tyler Groen able to clear a two on two as he sends that one in, save made. Toriani in the near side corner, sends it back out to the point. Quick shot, does not go from Franks. Now David Ettingen moving back the other way. Shot is wide. Line change for Illinois. Ettingen will send a nice feed across to Nathan Dash. He'll play the ricochet game, send that one all the way around the boards. Picked off, but still taken by an orange sweater. Matt Veeb trying to turn that around. Poke checked away, forces him to the corner. Forces it back to the point, to the far side. Joe Dorian gains a better angle, shoots. Save made, still alive in front. Tried for the wraparound there, he could not. Illinois still controlling. Tried for the scene pass there, and that becomes a souvenir off the stick of Bailey McCarthy. Three minutes left in period number two. Illinois out shooting the Boilers by two and outscoring them by that number still as well. Again, Kane Pasquet gave up four goals in the first half of the first period and Dave Apple's decision to stick with him seems to have been okay. It doesn't seem to have negatively impacted this Purdue team. And they have gotten some help from their offense in the form of two power play goals in the first period, but nothing since. Waiting there, killing time, sending a backhand to nobody there. Now Peyton Smith will get take two at that. He does the exact same thing over to Matt Wheeler. Purdue gains the zone. 
A man kept to the outside, still able to get one on goal and frozen. Faceoff pulled out to Illinois, cleared across both seams, chased down for it between Helfer and Frank. Still being fought for between those two as Frank goes into the boards, puck given up to Bogdanoff. Tried to get in there, great poke check off the stick of Pasquet. Purdue controlling in the trapezoid. Backhand to try and clear it there from Matthew Goring, he does. Nathan Dash turns things around. A man harassing him on his six. Now Illinois looking to move back in. Bogdanov chips it and goes down by the Illinois bench. Wheeler getting a lot of playing time in this second period as well, but Verasi takes it away from him. Anthony Verasi turns around not once, not twice, but three times, finds Gregory Ettingen. Ettingen does the same, has a lane now. Goes around two men, backhand chance too high. Nick Anderson has to chase that one down, keep the possession alive for Illinois. Sends it to Ettingen at the far side corner. Feeds it into his brother David. David Ettingen turns around, finds Nathan Dash on the near side. Dash all alone, instead sends a pass across both seams that goes through the legs of Gregory Ettingen. Matthew Wheeler killing time, that's one he wished he had back, but able to be bailed out by the ricochet nonetheless. Now a chip and chase from Matthew Goring. Line change for the Boilers with a minute and a half left in the period. Pass too hot for David Ettingen to handle. Cole Theodore has that one now, sends it back into the trapezoid. David Ettingen, check that, Gregory Ettingen, nearly able to pick that one off. Sent across, Toriani, and now Nick Anderson has it in his own trapezoid. Toriani on his six, looking to apply that speed, sends it around. 60 seconds remaining in a scoreless period number two. Six goals in the first, none here in this middle frame. Illinois will look to reset as a few men go down. Alexander Matviev harassed by Jackson Graff. 40 seconds left on the near side. Illinois looks to clear. They're patient with it. Right to a black sweater. Toriani with a quick pass in. Shoved in by Cole Theodore. Right to Illinois. Luke Alpi trying to clear it. Sends it back to the half wall on the near side. Dan Wessel turns around now in that same location in neutral ice and Woodring will direct it away. Last line change of the period for the Boilers. 15 seconds left. This might very well do it for the second period. A man on Luke Alpi, six, he's able to make him miss. And now to the near side, although it's too hot for David Ettingen to handle, and that will do it for period number two. A period that was much like the first game between these two teams last night. A lot of speed, the physical factor rearing its head again, particularly for Illinois, a team that got out hit last night by these Boilers, returned with a lot of physical play of their own and still anybody's game with how Purdue has been able to come back already in this game from deficits. But a positive development for Illinois was that they were able to kill off two power plays from the Purdue Boilermakers in this period. So a greater mountain for Purdue to climb, but still a feasible mountain down two goals with 20 minutes left. For the WPGU listeners, we will send it back to the studio for the Illini Hockey Network. We'll see you for the third period after this.
Third period about to get underway. Quite the contrast between the first two. Six goals in the first 20 minutes and a, rad a rather uh, erratic, uh, frantic game. And in the second, no goals. Much quicker as well and a lot of increased physicality from both teams in the second frame. So Purdue with a bigger mountain to climb in half the time. Down two goals entering this final frame, and Illinois was able to kill off the power play opportunities from the Boilers in period number two, but certainly not by any means an insurmountable hill to climb for the Boilers. We talked about at the beginning of the second period how they just needed to wait around, hide around, and wait for Illinois to make the first mistake. Didn't expect it to be a fast game on their part, but it was. Curious to see if that continues or if it does become more of a pace battle who can control the pace here in this third period. Illinois does start out on the slower side with Joe Dorian feeding it around, playing the ricochet game. David Ettingen trying to chase that one down instead of Black Sweater beats him to it. Now on the far side, Jackson Graff trying to clear it. Two orange sweaters force him to redirect and move around. Graff still has it in the trapezoid. Still waiting, and now he clears it. Not very long, however, as David Ettingen able to chip it in. Matt Vive chasing after it, applying a four check, sends one man down, and he goes down respectively. Harrison Slovic now with Tyler Groen. Groen takes that away off the stick, feeds it back to Cole Fedor, fires a shot. Save made into the glove of Woodring. Forecheck responsible for a few goals already in this game, particularly on the Illinois side. That time it was Purdue, and great work between that top line and Groen and Theodore. We have seen them combine on many goals before in the season for the Boilers. Dylan Franks and Alec Bogdanoff set to take it, and controlled by Illinois. Puck cleared across both seams, goes through two men, before it's taken by Torin Frank. Frank, the man responsible for the first goal for Purdue in this game, reciprocates with a similar pass, and Nolan Woodring will get out of the crease to handle that. Spatafora takes it away and gains the zone. Two on four, though. Poke check there from Luke Alpi. Now Bogdanov fights with him, and Bogdanov gets hit into the boards, but able to get it out to Anthony Verossi and clear it. Atticus Helfer turns around. Good pass into Harrison Slovic. Slovic, a one on three, will be forced to move to his left. Fed one in, a few sticks cancel each other out, and that goes Purdue's way. Trying to get it around one man, the Boilers are trying to control it, but a one on three there, and the three win that battle, as it's taken now by Atticus Helfer on the far side. He clears it. The pass is continuing to go through multiple men, although no icing there. And on the other side, that's Jake Pickett. Pickett gets turned around, a little bit of a helicopter there, as Nick Anderson takes it in his own zone. Anderson around the trapezoid, two black sweaters there to meet him, has to circle back. Kept to that corner, looking for an outlet. Sends a backhand around, Peter Campisi trying for it. It gets close to the net, but no Illinois man there to retrieve it and cleared by the Boilers. Two minutes into this second period, a chase down for it. Nick Anderson sends it around, trying to cut it off. Ryan Kovitz nearly had it there, but sent back to the aforementioned Anderson on the far side. Pass goes all the way down as the icing waved off. Chasing after that one, Cam Page, and he sends it all the way back around. Same situation. Joe Dorian retrieves it now with a man on a six. Dorian gets it. Illinois has it on the near side. Justin Yang has to send it around a few legs. Now David Ettingen, a one on two, forced to that corner. Matt Vive comes to his aid as Wessel hits Ettingen, but Illinois able to keep it alive. Joe Dorian, near side, fires one, goes wide. Back to Sasha Matt Vive at the half wall on the far side. Matt Vive in, Ettingen can't get enough of it. Cleared by Purdue, and that one ends up on goal. Woodring active with the stick to send it back to the point. Wessel chasing it down. Ettingen will meet him. Ettingen applying a little bit of a forecheck there as both he and Wessel go down. Purdue still able to control it for the time being on the near side, looking for a clear. They get one, and maybe they get more. Tyler Groen tried to feed it into Cole Theodore off a of ricochet. Theodore has it in the trapezoid. Another man there to meet him, it's Toriani. Top line, back United, as they work on that. That goes off of a few sticks and high. Theodore, Toriani, and Groen back on the ice together. That top line for the Boilers. At the half wall on the near side, taken away by Alexander Matveev to the far side. Now Anthony Barassi chips that in. 
and chases. Line change for the rest of his counterparts. Bogdan off now tries to keep it in for Illinois. Gets it to Verossi. Save made off the shoulder. Rebound chance trying to get it in. Backhand. Another chance. Still alive in front. And play stopped. Or is it? No, it's still alive. Atticus Helfer controls. Illinois able to keep it in. Back into the crease now is Pasquet. Alpi fires a shot. He scores! And what a backbreaker that must be for the Purdue netminder. A lot of activity in front. Helfer, Matviv, we're all there for Illinois. Trying to apply some pressure in on Pasquet. They thought he had swallowed it up. He had still alive. Good work by Atticus Helfer to work that around. And good work as well by Harrison Slovic. You saw Harrison Slovic take the puck for Illinois and you're thinking he's got to apply it right away because Pasquet still really wasn't set up. Pasquet able to get back into his position and it was Luke Alpi that applied the pressure right away. And Illinois is back to a three goal lead. The second goal of the evening for the junior defenseman Alpi. Fifty fifty puck battle in the near side corner. Nick Anderson takes that in the trapezoid. Undermanned, however, will feed it out to Matthew McDonald. Illinois trying to keep it alive. Instead, it's fed in by Purdue. Batted down now and taken by the Illini. A few men collide there. That's Verossi in the fray for Illinois. Torin Frank turning that one around. Purdue looking for a clear. They have it. Gaining the zone. Spatafora. Fires one, gets close, and a save made as he loses his stick. What a beautiful sequence right there on that last goal for Illinois to stick with it, particularly Helfer, Slovic, and Alpi on the attack. And that's the second time tonight as well that Alpi and Slovic have combined Put a number up for Illinois. But just as it was in the first period, Purdue with a chance to go right back on the attack right away. Into the box is Peter Campisi and a power play for the Boilers to try and get it back to two. This third period looking much like how the first frame went in this game. Wheeler had that one ricocheted. Purdue trying to reset now. Peyton Smith has to turn around. Illinois doing a good job crowding them in neutral ice. Able to take that one away. Gregory Ettingen and kill some time. 90 seconds left on the slashing penalty to Campisi. Moving with a burst of speed now, but forced to the outside there is Torriani. A one on two there. Illinois is crowding the puck and heavily shading the puck handler as well on this power play. Smith fighting for it there alongside Torriani. A two-on-one battle. Illinois still trying to pull it out. Either way, they're winning that one as they're killing time on this power play. They do clear it from Gregory Ettingen and a line change there. 60 seconds left on the power play. Six minutes in to period number three. Luke Alpi has made it a three-goal game. Can the Boilers strike back again? Alpi turns that one around as he goes into the boards badly. And that will draw a penalty. Purdue not happy with that one. 45 seconds of four on four before a penalty, a power play for the rest of that time for Illinois. We want to remind you in the meantime, we'll pause for station identification. You're listening to WPGU 107.1, Champagne's alternative here on Illini Hockey Night. Again, that's WPGU 107.1 this Saturday, December evening. Again, 45 seconds of four-on-four four activity, a face-off in the Purdue zone. And then a minute 15 after that of an Illinois power play. It's Tyler Groen, one of the best weapons of this Boiler roster in the box for Purdue. Illinois will look to control here. Alpi fires another one. He's on hat-trick watch, but that one got too high. Bogdanoff able to take it away from a black sweater, trying to give Illinois the possession. He circles all the way around to the point, fires another one. Glove save right there from Pasquet. Bogdanov fires one low right there. That's a goal. Pasquet was, was on his skates. He was 
almost standing up there to get that. So Purdue got away with one right there. They'll look to clear now. Cam Page has it, sends it to the far side. Going around one man there is Spatafora. Still trying to make something happen, a one on three. Still trying to hold on to the puck, cannot. Slovic with some pesky defensive play there. Now Alec Bogdanov has it on the near side. Two men to his right, goes to his left. Poke check to take it away there as another man falls for Purdue. Alpi has to go back to get a stick. Anderson fires, a lot of traffic in front, that goes wide. 70 seconds of a power play now for Illinois. And a line change to accompany that. Ettingen moving to his right, fires a goal too high. Illinois screening Kane Pasquet heavily in the recent time. Matt Viv and back to Ettingen. Those two playing catch on the far side. 40 seconds left on the power play. Ettingen fires, still alive in front. The net dislodged. And Cam Page has to hold back Alec Bogdanoff. He didn't like how close the Illinois captain was getting to Kane Pasquet. And Pasquet is, looks to be shaken up. Was down for a long time, still down, and now able to get up. Again, his defense helped him last night heavily, turning away a lot of rebound chances and one-timers and, and doorstep chances as well with a lot of poke checks in front. Tonight, they haven't given him a lot of help, and it's led to multiple goals. Four of Illinois' five goals have been on the doorstep in this game. Certainly the difference maker for Dave Apple's squad as Purdue will look over this one. Hell for fires, another save made. 12 minutes left in this one. Again, Purdue down three. They're running out of time to mount a comeback. And they're gonna have to deal with 22 more seconds left until Tyler Groen is free from the box. off between Smith and Bailey McCarthy. One by Smith, taken to the corner. Matthew McDonald tries to take that one away. Still being fought for, but taken now by Illinois. Firing one, odd angle, still alive. Caroms to the far side. Luke Alpi trying to keep that one alive alongside Peter Campisi. Peyton Smith right in the middle of that. Right in front, the shot goes, and another save. Two seconds left on the power play for the Illini. Illinois, too, has expanded the range from which they're firing shots. They have fired them from the outside, they've fired them from the doorstep, but they've also fired them from tougher angles, and they've managed to get on goal and make things interesting, particularly with the team's propensity to force some shots on the rebound. As out of the box comes Groen, back to five on five. Franks tries to go through one man, pass too hot to handle. Purdue still able to hold on to it now. And resetting there, Torin Frank sends it back to the far side. Frank sends it in, shot in, save made by Woodring, bottled up. And an altercation after the fact between Spatafora and Bailey McCarthy. There's a little shove of the right arm from Bailey McCarthy. We'll draw the whistle and a warning. So now Purdue down three. They've Gotten it back to two twice in this game, but they haven't cracked the seal on that two goal deficit, thanks in large part to Illinois' physicality and the penalty kill in the second period. You got 11 and a half minutes left to find three goals. You just have to sustain time in the offensive zone. You're running out of time now to wait for Illinois to make the mistake for you to get on the power play. They do send a centering pass there, but Nick Anderson was the one to receive it. Jackson Graff still able to keep it in for the Boilers. The one on two gives Bogdan off the puck. He tries to clear it as he gets shoved down hard into the boards. Nolan Woodring coming out of the box and there's a penalty now as some more altercations. That appears to be Dylan Franks who got turned a little bit and some verbal drawing in the process as well. Woodring was in the middle of that. 
by sheer circumstance, just trying to get back to the bench. And that does not help the Boiler cause at all. Illinois with a chance to perhaps permanently ice this one. Evan Spataflora has made his way into the box for Purdue. There's a lot of verbal jawing there, in particular Dylan Franks using the mouth, Spatafora using the body instead, and that cost him two. So back on the attack go Illinois. Two power play goals in this game already, looking to make it perhaps an insurmountable four goal lead. Again, it was two to start this period. Luke Alpi has his second of the game. 50-50 puck battle. That's three on one. Into the trapezoid now, that becomes a two on one. Manages to get close. The puck's still alive, but controlled by Jackson Graff. Back to Gregory Ettingen at the point though. Graff is unable to clear it. Atticus Helfer will set things up. Ettingen, Purdue's denying the one-timers from Ettingen in his signature spot. Now he fires one, still alive in front. Trying to poke it in there was Alpi. Very aggressive with the stick, he goes down. And increasingly slow to get up as well. Kane Pasquet has taken a little bit of a beating tonight. That's his third altercation with some players and some sticks right in front. There's now a face off to his left between Bogdanov and Theodore. Controlled by the Boilers into that corner now. They look to clear, they can't, and it's taken away by Illinois. On the far side, that's Ettingen. Fires one off the pad. Nick Anderson chases that one down, has Atticus Helfer to his right, feeds it to him at the point. Helfer looking to move in, moves to his left, fires one, another save there. And a beautiful one there from Kane Pasquet, moving in and around to gain an angle as Joe Dorian tried to screen him. One minute left on the power play, 10 left in the period. Again, you're running out of time if you're Purdue to mount a defense. You were in the momentum. You had the momentum at the end of the first period. But Illinois has since been able to almost lull it back to even terms, and they certainly have it now. Up three goals, trying to make it four. Still alive in front, that puck alive there. And again, Purdue unable to stop the rebound chances here from Illinois. More altercations in front as Slovic fires one, but a good defense there. And a lot of activity in front from, appears to be Luke Alpi and Cam Page. That will stop play. And the linesman will share words with the Purdue bench. Another face off. Sasha Matviv there for Illinois. Matt Vive has been dynamite on the faceoffs tonight. And he wins another. Smith forces David Ettingen to his right and to an odd angle. Circles back in that far side corner. Good defense there from Peyton Smith, but a better pass from Ettingen over to Matt Vive. Matt Vive moves to his left. Illinois tried for some quick passing there, but unable to sense that was Anthony Verasi. That allows Purdue to get a line change. Harrison Slovic moving and gains the zone, but he's surrounded by four black sweaters. Feeds it back to Matt Vive, who feeds it to the far side. That's David Ettingen. He's again forced to that corner, this time by Tyler Groen. Back to Slovic. Matt Vive fires. Full body block. Still alive in front there. And unable to get stick to puck there was David Ettingen. Kept alive now. Slovic a shot, and that's why. Out of the box comes Spatafora. Beautiful full body block there. He went down on his back to deny that. As a hit there from Groen on Matt Vive and a pretty one at that as Purdue now able to clear. Harrison Slovic trying to chase that one. Groen on his six. Now Joe Dorian. Purdue controls, eight and a half left in this one. Groen chips it in, chases after it. That Slovic to contend with now as both go into the boards. They cancel each other out. Still looking for it. Poke check there from Alexander Matveev. Sends it back to the half wall. Illinois able to clear. Franks taking his time. Feeds it into nobody now. And Illinois will control. Dorian 
Kept to the outside, feeds it in. McCarthy running after it. Wheeler cuts it off first, gives Purdue some time. McDonald being aggressive though in the trapezoid and it gives Illinois the possession. More trouble in front looking for a centering pass but it's pulled out now by the Boilers. Taken away, McCarthy a shot. Great reaction time, quick reaction time there from Pasquet to deny that. He has certainly improved as this game has gone on since a rough stretch in the first period where he gave up four quick goals. Dave Apple trusted in his netminder to keep him in after that rough stretch, and he has improved. Needs more help from his offense, however, and they need to get it out of their own doghouse. Illinois has done a good job forcing the issue on the Boilers and keeping things on their side of the ice. And when Purdue has been able to clear it, the Illini have been able to make quick work of getting it back to the north end of the sheet. Right on cue there, they send it in. Verasi chases after that. But an icing will give the advantage back to the Boilermakers. Seven and a half left. And again, a three goal game. So now you start to look for answers. How can you keep things in your own O zone? Illinois did a great job of doing that on the power play and they've done a great job of that in the last five, 10 minutes of this period. It'll be imperative for the defensemen on the ice right now, Graf and Wessel to keep these pucks alive at the point as a quick shot right there and a pretty glove save from Woodring. So keep your eyes right now on the defensemen in the game, regardless of who they are for the Boilers. They have to keep these pucks alive at the point and keep this in the offensive zone for Purdue if they want to have a chance. Bogdanoff and Franks on the faceoff. There it's one of those defensemen, Jackson Graf, who sends a shot in off the knee of Bogdanoff. Franks tried to send that one close. Bogdanoff says no. Illinois looks to clear and they do. Helfer a little bit behind Verasi there. Espatafora sends that one in. Alex Lesguy turns it around. And now controlling that one, Helfer. Last guy has to chase it down again, falls down, able to go through the legs of one and a penalty coming there for the hit on Leskai. The guilty party, Dylan Franks. And he has not helped his team's case here in this third period. Penalty after penalty for Purdue that is keeping things on the Illinois side of the ice. Seven minutes left, they need to find three goals and. They're not in the position to even find one, it seems. Onto the ice for Illinois for the power play, and a chance to make it a four goal lead. The top line led by the captain, Alec Bogdanoff. Atticus Helfer has it now. Gregory Ettingen forced to his right by Peyton Smith. Smith has played both of these games very well. Gets a stick in the passing lane there, but Atticus Helfer able to feed it into the near side corner. Illinois controls for the time being. It's Nick Anderson. Anderson waiting patiently, playing catch with Helfer. Helfer now moves to his right, trying to go in, feeds it to Ettingen. Ettingen looking for that one-timer, he fires wide. And that one will carry him back to the Illinois zone. Nolan Woodring thought about giving some help. Instead, Atticus Helfer will take it himself. Now Nick Anderson trying to gain the zone. He's kept to the outside, sent on around. Anderson still has it in the trapezoid, fires a wraparound chance, and too high. Helfer has to control that one, he keeps it in. Again, we talked about it, these Illinois defensemen are keeping the possession on their side of the ice, not giving Purdue any chance to let up. Purdue able to control it that time though, let's see if they can get a shot off here. Cole Theodore with it, doesn't bother to do anything with it however, and Alec Bogdanoff now. Helfer in center ice, Illinois gains the zone at the near side point. An altercation there involving Gregory Ettingen. A 50-50 puck battle for it with 40 seconds left on the power play. Ettingen able to keep it in there. Another puck battle for it at the point. Torin Frank enters the fray there for Purdue and able to pull it out and clear. Line change for Illinois, 25 seconds left and five minutes, 25 seconds left in this game. Illinois will take all the time they need. Time is their friend now. And Harrison Slovic leads the charge. Five seconds left on the minor penalty. David Ettingen, Harrison Slovic, 
Pass too hot for Ettingen to handle. Alpi tries to cut it off. He's able to control it as we're back to five on five. Matt V fighting for it. Pulled out to Purdue and they clear. With a burst of speed and a pass too hot for a man to handle there, Woodring needs to hurry as he sends that one to one of his teammates. Groen takes that at center ice off the body of David Ettingen. He fires one in now on a save made there by Pasquet, another one. Four and a half left in this one. This is the last game of the calendar year for both of these teams. Illinois will be back with a home and home against Roosevelt the second weekend of January. And Purdue will travel to Northeast Indiana to take on Trine that same weekend. Five weeks from now, and again, the last game in uniform for Purdue for three seniors that will be graduating. Among them, Toriani, Peyton Smith, and Evan Spadafora, three of the most involved players for the Boilers as a backhand chance there bottled up. Three of the most involved men in this series aside from the netminder, of course, for the Boilers in their last game. Donning the old black and gold. Four minutes left until Illinois emerges victorious and splits this series. Again, they're up three goals. McCarthy wins that faceoff. We're starting to see, too, another thing for Illinois that they can carry over into the next year. A lot of people have taken faceoffs. You know, you look at Every team has their signature three, four centermen on the roster, and Illinois does. You have Matt Veeve, you have Bogdanoff, you have Aiden Taylor who can take them on that third line, took them on the top line last night, and a few others, but you're starting to see guys who, that's not their natural position, but still play in that centerman position and take some face-offs among them, Patrick McDonough, Bailey McCarthy. You saw Andrew McLean take a face-off tonight as well for Illinois, so some added versatility that John O'Pilk is trying to build up. Of course, need we forget to mention Nick Anderson and Atticus Helfer, the two former defensemen that have since made the push to left wing, and they at times in the season have also taken some face-offs. So the added versatility is something that John O'Pilka can build on as his team looks to make a push as the calendar flips to 2024. That 98 mile an hour fastball ends up in the Illinois bench. Three and a half left in this one. Again, six of the seven goals in this game from the first period. In order, Anthony Verassi, Atticus Helfer, Luke Alpi, the first for the Boilers, and Torin Frank, Nathan Dash answering, and then Will Toriani, one of those seniors, with another power play goal. Perhaps the turning point of this game, though, was when Illinois was able to kill off a Purdue power play. They had been perfect up to that point, and that had been the source of their scoring. For Purdue in this second period, it was wait for Illinois to make the mistake. And Illinois did make the mistake. They couldn't cash in. And since then, Illinois has really controlled this game. They've responded physically. They've kept things on their side of the ice, really the turning point of this one. And Luke Alpi has added his second goal to bring it back to a three-goal lead in the third period. Evan Spadafora trying to rush toward the net. Nothing he could do there. Bogdanoff cuts off that pass and sent to a white sweater where it's cleared. That's now Anthony Verassi. Franks moving in. Easy glove save there from Woodring. And again, another thing to talk about coming into this game is Ben Mazurik played very well last night. We wondered how that change would affect Illinois. They had almost a perfect game last night and so many things that had plagued them coming into the season, they had been able to fix. They received passes better. They played a cleaner game. They didn't stall in clearing the puck. That was their greatest weakness entering this game, and uh, they worked on that, and they did that well last night. So coming into tonight, the question loomed of how many adjustments were you really willing to make if you're John O'Pilka? Do you want to mess with something that went really well last night? And he did make some adjustments, including splitting up the Ettingen brothers. Some, like that adjustment, didn't last very long as those two ended up on a line again. Others ended up being just fine, particularly putting Nolan Woodring in goal. Again, entering this game, he had started six of the last eight, started as a spark plug off the bench, and 
the team had turned to him in dire straits, and he had responded, cementing himself as a possible number one option, it will appear to be, to continue to be a platoon between himself and the senior netminder, Ben Mazurik, who played last night. As a quick shot there, does not go. Gregory Ettingen in the box for what is roughly the remainder of this game, two minutes left on the clock. Spatafora fires, unable to answer on that scene pass there was Tyler Groen. So a lot of very positive developments for Illinois in this week. Despite going one and one, a lot of the problems which again had plagued them earlier in the season, they are starting to fix. They're showing that they can play fast, they can play physical, they can play, they can win in multiple ways, which is always the sign of a great team. They're showing a lot of versatility as well, something certainly not a bad thing to have. As a clear right there, a minute 25 left in this game. And for Purdue, as Benjamin Toby and Zane Burnside rest up, it's gonna be a little bit of experimentation with some line combinations and some next man up mentality. Again, Toriani will be graduating alongside the likes of Peyton Smith and Evan Spadafora. Those three have played such an important role into this series. So if you're Dave Apple and this coaching staff, who do you turn to to make that jump? You imagine Cole Theodore and Tyler Groen are gonna be the mainstays. Look for a guy like Torin Frank to play a big role. Defensively, you're just fine, but maybe a guy like Steven Lukes picks up the pace. Another possible man you could throw on that list. Maybe you throw a defenseman up. Dylan Franks has to be a big part maybe as well, particularly in the center circle. So a next man up battle for the Boilers as they start and the calendar flips to 2024 for them. 25 seconds left in this game. And you know, they, they do get bailed out by the fact that they don't play for five more weeks, but Purdue again started nine and two. They have since lost, coming into this series, three of their last four. That is now four of their last six. Lost two to a tough Lawrence Tech team, and you know, Division Three against Division One, still able to win one against Illinois. As a big hit right there to close things out. Matthew Wheeler not happy about that. Again, they're bailed out by the fact they don't play for five months, but that might be a defining factor of this first half of the season, that you lost four of your last six as that will finish things in this one. Illinois takes it by a score of five to two. They got out quickly, they got out in front. The story coming into this game was expect the top line for Purdue to do just that. But instead it was Illinois applying the pressure with three goals in six minutes on Kane Pasquet. Those are six minutes he wished he could have had back. And a good all around effort for Illinois to respond when they needed to in the departments where they needed to, particularly on that penalty kill in the second period. So Illinois takes this one five to two. They move to eight and nine in the first season of John O'Pilka's tenure. And they will go into the 2024 year as happy campers with a win under their belt against their rivals. For all of us in the broadcasting crew, we say so long for now until next time. This is George Corey bidding you farewell. Until next year for the Illini Hockey Network viewers, for WPGU 107.1, we send it back to Colin McCarthy in the studio.